Good evening and welcome to Nicewood Congregational Church and to this our Christmas Eve service online. As you well know, this pandemic has disrupted life for many people throughout the, the whole wide world and no more so in churches within Scotland and the United Kingdom. And as a result of it, we had decided not to meet as we would normally do so on this special night for the safety of yourself and for others around you. But hopefully in 2021, we are hopeful that we will be gathered again, celebrating in big style our Christmas Eve service. And until that time, we encourage you to join with us online as we welcome the birth of Emmanuel, God with us. See you here back again next year.
I know it's rich coming from me, but a Merry Christmas to y'all. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see if this thing has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them.
Hi there, I thought I would just pop in to say a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I know we're not spending it the way that we normally do, however, yous are still all in our hearts and I can't wait to see yous all again in the new year. Have a lovely Christmas. Jesus talks with a Samaritan woman. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? for Jews do not associate with Sumerians. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that gives you, asked you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater? Then our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Amen.
So a big thank you to Fiona for uh, the readings tonight from Luke's Gospel and John's Gospel. Two um, gospel passages, both well known, one particularly known well at Christmas Eve services and Christmas morning services, the story of the um, birth of Jesus, beginning with the with the census called by Quirinius and the Holy Family travelling to the birthplace, or what would be the birthplace of Jesus. If you've listened to Fiona reading and perhaps read along with your own Bible or had access online, you probably know this story quite well. It's one that's been taught in Sunday schools, it's portrayed often in films and uh, television programmes at about this time of year. It's the story of a family who are brought together, of an unmarried mother who is engaged as such to her husband-to-be, Joseph, and she is pregnant with the, the child, the child being God's child. If you look at the story, and it's so well known, you've always probably heard it, you probably pay no attention to it. Let me give you an example when you don't pay attention to something. Over 20 years ago, we went on our honeymoon to um, Ontario. And when we went there, we were taken to see uh, Niagara Falls. We were taken through the beautiful little town of Niagara on the lake in Ontario and we went to see the falls and the beauty and the splendour and the actual awesome magnificence of these falls were just absolutely outstanding. And it was in autumn when they call it fall over there. It seems ironic that we went to see the falls in the falls. But we went and we were awestruck, absolutely awestruck by the sheer volume of water cascading over the edges of the waterfall, deep down into that little sort of well below. And we stood in awe and in wonder at this marvellous creation of nature. And we stood looking at it for about five to ten minutes. And then we looked at other things and we planned to go elsewhere. We'd been there, we'd seen it. And so the magnificence, the magnificence that we saw at that first time had been sort of diminished as we thought about where are we going to go next. For that little bit of time, it held our attention. Those shepherds who heard the, the, the song of the angel, it, the angel held their attention for just enough time to, to deliver the message and for the shepherds to then make their journey to that stable. And in Matthew's Gospel, it is wise men that we hear of who also make a journey when the star appears. And that star they follow. But after the awe and the wonder, they'll look about. And we noticed that down in Niagara on the lake. People came to look, breathtaking moments, but after a while, it was as if it was an old familiar territory. And that's what we do with the Gospels. Even if we're non-church goers, we are aware of them. We've heard them. We've heard them at school, probably. We've heard them on the television. Probably been told to us by an elderly family member many years ago. Or they may be absolutely brand new, fresh, you've never heard them. But the reality is, 
that the story will not be so unfamiliar. But taking that story today, during this pandemic, there are things that we can identify with. First of all, the Holy Family, Mary and Joseph, were in isolation. Everywhere they went was closed. There was no room. The shepherds were up in the field. They were on their own. They were in a social bubble. Everybody who played a part on this Christmas story all were coming together in little pockets, little groups. They came to see a newborn babe. A newborn babe that wasn't surrounded by midwives or doctors. A newborn babe that was vulnerable and in a position where it could have been touch and go in the modern world, whether that baby would survive being born in such circumstances. But this baby was Emmanuel. A family who had to do an arduous travel, who were compelled to travel back to their hometown, whereas we are compelled to stay within our city boundary limits. A family with no NHS or Medicare. A family very vulnerable. on their own. Shepherds. The lowest of the low. Shepherds tended to have sheep near to the temple because they could sell them for sacrifice at hugely inflated prices. So shepherds were the lowest of the low, not to be trusted. These shepherds done the journey. They went to see and pay homage to the newborn king. What joy had entered the world. But Fiona gave us another story from John's Gospel which shows part of that child's ministry as an adult. And it's when we take the Gospel story for granted of his birth. It's when we take the story for granted that we no longer look at it with the awe and the splendour, just like we take down the decorations so in our trees and in our living rooms and outside in our gardens. The time has passed. And all too often with Christmas, that time has passed. But we must remember something important about this Christmas. This Christmas it will be harder to, to do shopping. The result of that, there's no doubt, as we enter into tiers of three and four and non-essential shops close, we, we suddenly find ourselves scrambling online, hoping to get delivery before the big day. And quite often we're trying to make up for the things that we can't do. So we, we pay more for, for goods or we get bigger and better goods, or we get more. We go for the most expensive item, the most expensive gift, or a series of small gifts that would go past our, our budget. But why? Because we're trying to make up. We're trying to make up for what's been a, a rotten year. We look for the most expensive gifts. Some people do. Some people can't afford to. And perhaps this is for you tonight. As Jesus is an adult sitting at Jacob's well in John's Gospel. And remember that John was a first-hand account of Jesus. He was with Jesus. So he writes this from personal knowledge. John sees this story and decides to include it in his Gospel. And for this Christmas... This is very, very important. I want you to think back to the story of Luke that Fiona read of the isolation, of the travel, 
and how you feel just now. I want you to think of how you look at something for the first time ever in your life and the awe and in wonder. But once you see it once, twice, three times, the awe and the wonder leave you. So I now want you to think of the story of, jo of Jesus with the Samaritan woman. This is a lady who comes out in the height of the midday sun to avoid everybody else because she has been married that many times. She has a, a bad reputation. And whilst she's collecting water for her and her husband, whom she isn't actually married to, living with instead, and she's had five before it, she sees this man who asks her for a drink of water, a drink of water. And she is astonished that a Jew should speak to her, a Samaritan, a woman who is in, the, in this village with this reputation. It's a no-no. It's a social, social no-no. And yet, he begins to speak with her, and she with him. And he talks about the living water. He is the living water. In John's Gospel, he actually says, Will you give me a drink? You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus answered, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that asks you for a drink? You would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. That's the most precious gift. Jesus would have given her living water, for he would be giving her himself. He is the living water. The most precious gift. So I hope this Christmas, during this terrible lockdown that we're all facing, that you have a, a, a very merry Christmas and that the living water that came as a babe to that isolated family, those isolated shepherds in a town where doors were firmly closed, no entry, no room. I hope you realise that that's the greatest gift ever given to this world. And so if Christmas has been tough for you this year, if Christmas has been tough for your family, for your friends, or if you've lost people over this 2020, I say to you, don't lose the awe and the wonder of the living water, because he truly is the greatest gift that humankind can receive. I wish you a very Merry Christmas and a healthy and happy New Year for 2021. And I'm sure that all of us, speaking for the majority of our congregation at Nicewood Congregational Church, I can safely say we wish you all the best for 2021 and we hope that each and every one of you Remain safe and sound with your families. And until we meet again, Amen. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Stay safe. Seize the
swaddling bands All in the rock in swaddling bands And in the manger Have a very merry Christmas. Have a very healthy Christmas. A lovely Christmas to you and yours. And all the best for 2021.
everybody. Hiya. We made it to the end of 2020. So, we message from our household to your household. We, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Christmas. We, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Christmas. We, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.